or concerns before we get started. So we're most people that are here right now at the extra session that I just had. If you weren't, just say no or something. <clears throat> Okay, cool. So we are essentially just going to continue from where we left off um, in that session, just because um, we were a little bit behind. Oh, sorry. We were a little bit behind. Um, and so yeah, we can go over a quick summary of everything at the end of the session. That's what I'm planning on doing. Um, doing like a quick uh, five minute recap of everything we've done. Um, but yes, so unless we have any objections or anything or any questions, we are going to get started. I'm trying to share a um, thing with you guys, but it's not working. So whatever, I guess I'll just email it to you. Oh, wait, it worked. Okay, cool. Ta -da. Okay, that was so much work. Um, but yeah, so here's the agenda for today. As I said, we went through announcements and we're going to continue chapter 16. We're going to go through these three reactions and then we are going to do a summary of everything. Hopefully this will stay up as I uh, continue sharing my screen, but I honestly don't know. WebEx is weird. Okay. So you guys can see my iPad screen, correct, with like the handout on it? Yes? Okay. <coughs> Alrighty. That was a really long-winded intro, I feel, but that's fine. So I know um, on the actual list right here, um, Enamine is all the way at the end, uh, but I'm going to move it up to be the one up next. If you guys have any questions about that, um... Feel free to ask. Okay. So the reason I am doing the enamine reaction next is because this one also deals with amines. So I want you guys to be able to compare and contrast um, the two different amine reactions. So for this one... Instead of having a primary amine, we're going to have a secondary amine. Very important that you know it's a secondary amine. So in the case of a secondary amine, we are also going to have... Um, our handy dandy HCl acid catalyst. In the first step, we're gonna steal a hydrogen and become protonated. So, yay, it becomes OH. In the next step, as always, the lone pair. I'm writing it kind of crooked so I can make the lone pair be on the top. Um, so it's going to go ahead and attack, kick up these electrons. And someone asked, can we also do it in base? Yes, we can. And also remember, it is a reversible reaction. So we have OH on one side. And on the other side, we have N with two R groups and a hydrogen. And we are going to have a plus charge on that nitrogen because it has four um, substituent, or yeah, substituents we can say. So at this point, what can we do for the next step? While you guys answer that, I also wanna point out, um, we have R and R prime. 
And so all R prime means that it's another R group in addition to the first one. Intramolecular proton transfer. Exactly. Yay. You guys are awesome. So the hydrogen here, or the oxygen, excuse me, just to make the arrows less ugly, I'm going to flip that around. So the oxygen in the OH is going to steal a hydrogen, give those electrons back to the nitrogen. And so what was the point of doing that? What was the point of doing a proton transfer? Sorry, my screen keeps doing that. I don't know why it's not doing the palm rejection. Awesome. So people said, make a better leaving group, reform the double bond. Exactly. Sweet. Um, and bring back sp2 hybridization. Awesome. All correct. So we now have a lone pair on the nitrogen. And we also have um, a plus charge on the oxygen, which makes it a good leaving group. So we bring those electrons down, reform the double bond, and kick off the leaving group. So now we get something very similar to the amine. And now we also have H2O left over. And we also have Cl minus. Are we happy now? What do y'all think? <laughs> I love when people are like, yes, question mark. Like, I think so, but you said that in a weird tone. Um, so it is kind of a trick. We are not happy because we still have a plus charge on our nitrogen. Nitrogen does not want four bonds. So what can we do at this point? Are we able to deprotonate? No, exactly. So that is off the table. We can't deprotonate anything. So what is our other option that we learned so far? If we can't deprotonate, what did we do? Someone said react again. Exactly. That's what we did in the acetal-ketal reaction. But we can't do that in this case because of steric hindrance. So when the nitrogen has multiple R groups, we are not going to be able to react again. Which is like, oh, again, another um, chemistry rule that has a million different um things to it i forget the word sorry uh exceptions a million different exceptions uh but someone else had a really great idea and they said what if we form a double bond somewhere else so we're gonna have um that chlorine right the cl minus and it can actually I'm going to move it over under the arrow just to kind of show the convention. So remember, we have all of these hydrogens here. And something we can actually do, as someone mentioned, is we can steal one of those hydrogens and perform an elimination. And let's just see what would happen if we did that. So let's say Cl minus steals one of these hydrogens and these electrons are moved up here. That would mean these electrons from the double bond would have to be transferred up to the nitrogen. So we would get I'm only going to draw the hydrogens on the side that we um, did the elimination on, just for simplicity's sake. 
So we have formed a double bond, and now we have a single bond to the nitrogen. Nitrogen is bonded to the two R groups, and now it has gained its lone pair back. So now do we look happy? Yes, exactly. All right, so let me just clarify again what happened in this step, right? So we performed an elimination to give those electrons back to the nitrogen. And so in order for this reaction to go to completion, we need an alpha hydrogen. If you guys remember from chapter 12, I believe we briefly covered the alpha position. So in relation to the carbonyl carbon, this will be the alpha position, this will be the beta position, so on and so forth. So we need hydrogens attached to this alpha position, and those are called alpha hydrogens. We will go back to that in a second. We're going to put a pin in it for one moment. And we're going to go back to this final product that we have. What do you guys think it's going to be named? Enamine, exactly. And the way I remember this is it's an alkene plus an amine. So it's the ene amine. And someone said the uh, elimination plus amine. That's also a great way to look at it. And someone said, I have a question. Why wouldn't we call the formation of the double bond a substitution? Um, so... I think the only reason we would call it an elimination is just because we eliminate the hydrogen and we form a double bond. Um, we wouldn't really call it a substitution just because um, we're not substituting the hydrogen for anything. So if we then uh, got rid of this double bond and put a different group here, that's when we would call it a substitution. Um, just like the benzene reactions... Um, after we formed the double bond, actually, let me not say it exactly like that. Okay, so the reason the electrophilic aromatic substitutions um, were named a little bit differently is because when we formed the double bond, we were also forming an elimination, or we were also doing an elimination because we were eliminating the hydrogen. But before we did the elimination, we did an addition reaction. So we had added another group to that benzene ring. And in the second step, we were just reforming the double bond. So overall, it would be a substitution. But in this case, we hadn't added anything because we're only talking about from here to here. So we hadn't added anything to this carbon for it to be considered a substitution. You're very welcome. Um, so someone asked, uh, I said that all of these reactions are called nucleophilic additions. Uh, yes, this one is still considered a nucleophilic addition reaction. Because when we call it a nucleophilic addition, we're pretty much just talking about these first couple of steps. So this nucleophile is going to attack and add to that carbon and stay there. So that's the addition part of the reaction. <coughs> okay. Um, I had two questions. Yes. Shoot. So one, you said that we did that last step because the N has two substituents. Yes. Is that what you said? Okay. And then for the intermolecular proton transfer, mm -hmm. you said it, it brings it back to SP2. It makes it a better leaping group. And what else? Or is that the only two things it does? So it's pretty much just going to make it a better leaving group and go back to sp2. Um, it also gives it a plus charge on the nitrogen, but that's more of like a secondary thing. It's not directly from 
the intramolecular proton transfer. Okay, thank you. You're very welcome. Very good questions. Okay, so we put a pin in this, so let's go back to it. I'm gonna move it over here. So, in order for the enamine reaction to happen, we have to have a, or N alpha proton. And so we can actually have a couple different cases, right? So every reaction we do will not be a plain old ketone like this. We can actually have a ton of different kinds of ketones reacting. So in the case of um, an unequally substituted ketone, so when they don't have equal sides, or we can also call it an asymmetrical ketone, we have to decide which side we would take the proton from. <coughs> so, oopsie. we're going to do some practice with that. So for this ketone, let's call this side A, and let's call this side B. Which side do you guys think will we take the hydrogen from to perform the elimination? <coughs> A or B? Ooh, we're getting a pretty even split between A and B. Well, now more people are voting for B. Alrighty, so anyone who picked A, why do you think it was A? And then I'm going to ask the same thing to people who picked B. And someone said, because we want to get rid of that double bond. Yes, um, but why do we think this side is better than this side? Or vice versa. Whoever picked B, why do you think this side is better than this side? Someone actually said it before, but it disappeared because so many people responded in the chat. <clears throat> cool. So a couple people said um, why they chose side B. And it was because it would make the more stable final product. And what we mean by that is if we take this hydrogen, we will form a more substituted double bond. <clears throat> So when we make our final product, we could either have this double bond to side B, or we could have this double bond to side A. Since side B is more substituted than side A, we know that side B will be the better alpha hydrogen. So just to reiterate, um, if we were given this ketone <clears throat> and we had to choose which side, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> which alpha hydrogen to take, we would choose the hydrogen on side B or carbon B because the final product would be a more stable double bond than if we chose a hydrogen from side A. So, we don't want this one. We do want this one. And then someone asked for the reactions we did before, it wouldn't really matter because we didn't take any protons from the alpha carbon. Exactly, so for all the reactions before the enamine, doesn't matter what the ketone looks like, um, you're pretty much gonna get the same product because, or you're gonna get the same reaction, nothing's gonna change because we're not doing anything to the alpha carbon. This is the only one where we actually have to um, look at the starting material and kind of, figure out the final product based on stability. If that makes sense, the way I worded that. The other thing I wanna talk about is sometimes this reaction will be no reaction. And the reason for that is what if we have
and aldehyde, right? In this case, or you know what, let me be nice first. So if we have just a regular old aldehyde, will we take a hydrogen from side A or from side B? What do you all think? So a couple people said A, a couple people said B, but I, I, the lava. Excuse me. Um, one thing I want you guys to think about is, is this hydrogen on the alpha position? No, exactly. So it's a trick question because these hydrogens are the only possible choices because this one is not on the alpha position. You're never going to remove the aldehyde hydrogen. So if we had an aldehyde, we only have one side to choose from. So that makes it kind of complicated if we have a fully substituted aldehyde. So if we have something like this, we have no reaction because we have no alpha hydrogens. Same rule goes by for a ketone. So let's say we have a fully substituted ketone and we try to react it with a secondary amine. This will be no react, Oops. no reaction again. So, so far from all the reactions we've done, the enamine one is the most complicated because we have to pay attention to which side we will make the double bond on based on which side will make a more stable double bond and which side is more substituted. And also we have to look out for no reaction because if we have a fully, if we have a fully substituted aldehyde or a fully substituted ketone, we will get no reaction. This one had a lot to it. Do you guys have any questions or anything? How do we feel about this? Good, bad, somewhere in between. Someone said good. Someone said 7 out of 10. Totally feel that. Um, and someone asked me to repeat it. So yes, of course I can do that. So... Uh, since the enamine reaction requires an alpha hydrogen, if we have a fully substituted aldehyde, which means we have no alpha hydrogens, or a fully substituted ketone, which means, again, no alpha hydrogens, that means we will have no reaction. And I can actually go ahead and... I know. I know it looks really sloppy, but <clears throat> I didn't feel like zooming in and out again. You are very welcome. Alrighty, are we good to move on? Okay, cool. So, let me just go back up and check which one's next. Ooh, the hydrozone. Okay. That one's another fun one. So I'm going to add another page here. All right. So now we have the Hydra Zone reaction. So we're going to start with something new. And it's going to look like so. 
and we're going to use an acid catalyst just because that's what we always use. This could also work with base. There's going to be no differences. I'm just choosing acid for simplicity. Alrighty, so we're going to name this, but we're going to name it at the end um, just so I can make a joke to help you remember. All right, so in the first step, what's going to happen? Since we have an acid catalyst, and someone asked, yes, the acid and base will form the same product, just have a slightly different mechanism. Um, and yes, awesome, as you guys said, the first step will be protonation. The uh, electrile will be protonated and it will become more electrophilic. Also, sorry if I'm like blinking a lot. My contacts are bothering me. <clears throat> so we protonate this and add a plus charge. And now our nucleophile can attack. So now we have kind of a weird nucleophile because there's two nitrogens. Do you guys think it matters which nitrogen is going to attack here? No, because they're exactly the same. Awesome. So we're going to attack and kick up these electrons. And we get... OH, and on the other side, we are going to add N, which is attached to an NH2, and it also has two hydrogens. So, are we happy? No, why not? Plus charge on the nitrogen, exactly. Perfect. All right, so what can we do to get rid of the plus charge on the nitrogen? Intermolecular proton transfer, yay! Okay, so these are going to, or these electrons on the oxygen are going to take the hydrogen from nitrogen, give those electrons back, and Please remind me, what is the point of doing this? I will read the chat as soon as I look up from writing. Return to SP2 and make it a better leaving group. Exactly. You guys are already pros. I love it. It makes me so excited. Alrighty. So now this lone pair will, as you guys said, go down, form a double bond, kick off the leaving group. So now we get double bond to nitrogen. Nitrogen is bonded to an NH2 and a hydrogen. Are we happy? No, why not? because there's a plus charge on the nitrogen. Awesome. Alrighty, so we have a plus charge on the nitrogen. Um, what are the three different ways that we know how to get rid of a plus charge from the past reactions? I want you to give me all three before giving me the one that works here, please. No, I mean, Janelle, you're right. Deprotonation is one of them, exactly. What are the other th other two? Elimination, exactly. And we used elimination for the enamine one. And we can also react a second time. Absolutely. And we did that in the acetal-ketal reaction. And so Janelle said we're going to do deprotonation for this one instead of elimination or reacting again. Why is Janelle correct? What do you guys think? Oh, I'm literally stupid. It's not Janelle. It's Jillian. I can't read. I'm so sorry. 
because we have a hydrogen. Exactly. So the hydrogen um, being present means that the easiest way to go to the next step is to deprotonate. Okay, so we have a Cl minus, and that is going to take the hydrogen and give those electrons back to the nitrogen. And so we get a double bond to the nitrogen, and the nitrogen is attached to another nitrogen. And so this is our final answer. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I'm literally so embarrassed. This is why I don't say anyone's names. I'm so sorry for calling you to know. Anywho's. So, ta-da! This is our final product. We are happy with her. Yay! So now we are going to go back and name this reagent and our final product. Okay. So can you guys guess what the final product is going to be called? Just from the pattern. Hydrozone, exactly. So I will write that down. And our um, reagent right here, the reactant, is someone said a diam diamine. So technically, yes, that is a valid way to name this. But the kind of common name that we're going to use is the hydra. Zine. So we have the hydrazine and the hydrazone. And you guys already know that means I have a silly way to remember which is which. And okay, don't make fun of me. This is really silly, I know. But so hydrazine, we put it in. In is in the name hydrazine, it goes in. Hydrozone has an O, and you can either be basic and think, oh, O is going to go out of the reaction, hydrozone, it goes out, but I like to think of it like hydrazine goes in, and then hydrozone is, oh, snap, the reaction's done, we have hydrozone. I know it's stupid, but you guys will remember it now, I promise. Okay, cool. That's that's that on that. Um, any questions, comments, or concerns for this reaction? This one tends to be a student favorite because it's really quick. Questions? I'll give it a second so you guys can look at the reaction. Uh, yeah, I have one. So for all of the NH2 ones, um, are we always going to have like the same product with the acid and the base? Pretty much, yep. So far, all of them will be the same. Okay. Good question. Okay, so the next one um, is going to be very similar to the hydrozone. It's literally going to be almost the same name. We're going to call it the phenyl hydrozone. And I just realized that this is actually not on your list of reactions. I'm not sure why I did that. I apologize. Um, but we're going to cover it. And then someone said these are still reversible. Yes, they are. <clears throat> and the acid and base will give the same product. So the phenyl hydrozone. <laughs> is going to look almost exactly the same. I'm just going to draw a longer arrow so I don't, like, smush the reagent. So the reagent will be H2N, NH, or I will draw it up here. And this nitrogen is going to be attached to a benzene ring. So does anyone want to guess what the name of this reagent is? Uh, 
if the other one was a hydrazine. Phenylhydrazine, awesome. And this one is kind of self-explanatory. It's just a hydrazine plus a phenyl. And so this reaction mechanism is actually going to be almost exactly the same. So the big thing I want to focus on is going to be um, in the next step. So let's just zoom through the first step. Bam, same as before. We steal that hydrogen to protonate. We get OH with a plus. And now the fun stuff is how are we going to attack? Because now there for sure is a difference between the two nitrogens, right? We can all agree on that. What the heck am I writing? And right now I'm just going to write pH instead of the phenyl group um, just because it takes up a lot of space. So, can we all agree that there's a difference between these two nitrogens now? Yes? Okay, cool. And someone already answered my next question, uh, which was, which one of these will actually be the nucleophilic nitrogen? And someone said it would be the NH2 because of less sterics, and that is absolutely correct. So, this will go ahead and attack kick off those electrons. So we get OH on one side, and now we get NH2 attached to NH attached to a phenyl. And now we have a plus here, as if everything wasn't complicated looking enough. So what's going to happen in the next step? The proton transfer. Awesome. So these electrons will steal a hydrogen. And we're going to go down now. So we get O, H2, gasp. It has a plus charge. The better leaving group. Whoa. Now we get NH, NH, pH. So what's going to happen in this step? We're going to form the double bond. Yes. So bam, bam, kick off the leaving group. And so now we get. trying to draw with an eraser. That's always going to be successful. So we're double bonded to our nitrogen, which is double bonded to an NH, or excuse me, single bonded to an NH, single bonded to a phenyl. And we also have this annoying little hydrogen here. And we're going to have a plus charge. How do we get rid of this plus charge? Someone please tell me. So we're not going to protonate, we're going to do the opposite, deprotonate, exactly. Um, and I'm only being picky because he will probably try to trick you with those little things. So we are going to deprotonate, and someone said that we do have Cl in solution, so awesome. Going to steal that hydrogen and give those electrons back to the nitrogen. And we get... Ta-da! Ta-da! And just for the final product, I will draw it. Ta-da! Are we happy? Yay! Okay, so someone said yes, that's why I said yay. So what do we think the final product is going to be called? Whoa, I don't know why I did that. Phenyl hydrazone, awesome. I don't know if you guys can tell, but I get genuinely so excited <laughs> about this chapter. I don't know why. 
Um, but you guys are being so great. I love it. I love the participation. You guys are doing awesome. And so we finished another reaction. Yay. Any questions about this one? This is again reversible and acid and base catalyst will give you the same product. The only thing I want to highlight with this one is that we cannot react with this middle guy right here. The one in the middle will not be nucleophilic, only the one on the end will be because of steric. Any questions? If not, okay, we have five more minutes. And so as promised, we're gonna go back and review just cause I don't wanna start another reaction um, and not be able to finish it. Makes me sad. Um, but yes, we will finish up on Monday with the last two reactions and you guys will be good to go for the exam at that point. Cool. Any questions before we start doing the review real quick? I have a question. Yes, what's up? Um, do normally all of their reactions appear on the test or does he like pick like three of them? It's usually all of them. Um, okay. But that being said, it's not like the full mechanism and everything. It's mostly just like starting material, final product kind of thing. Okay. Thank you. You're welcome. And someone asked if we'll go over the naming for ketones and stuff. So yes. So the way we're going to review is we're going to start out by naming all these things. <clears throat> so we are going to name all of our uh, carbonyls. So, I don't know why I say so, so much. Um, we know that this is a ketone. We've done that a bajillion times. We know this is a carboxylic acid. We know this is an aldehyde. What is this one? You guys tell me, please. Esther, awesome. And I am not sure if I mentioned this before, but what is the name for this? <clears throat> you guys are so quick with that one. Yes, it is the amide. And if you're anything like me, you might mix up esters and ethers and amides and amines a little bit in the beginning. So just a reminder, an amine looks like so. So that's an amine and it's primary, secondary, tertiary. And an ester is this, while an ether is this. And the way I think about it, um, I feel like most of you guys have ether and ester down already, but there's an R group on ether side. So that's how I think about it. And then amide is going to sound so weird, but I think of it as um, they're like stuck together. So it's the ride or die amide. I don't know. That one only makes sense to me. Nobody gets it, but it's fine. Any questions so far on just the naming? Most of this stuff should be kind of review. If not, let's put them in order of reactivity. And just for simplicity's sake, I'm going to say A, B, C, D, E. And back in chapter 12, when we were doing order of reactivity, what did we say was the most reactive carbonyl group? The aldehyde. Yes. And so the reason we said it was the aldehyde you guys have already said it. You guys know what I'm going to ask already. I love it. 
is because of electronics and steric effects. So the aldehyde is the most reactive because it has the least steric hindrance and the least electronic effects. And so what comes after aldehyde? B for a ketone, exactly. So ketone has a little bit more sterics and electronics, but it's always going to be second best um, because it's the only other one that doesn't have those electronegative groups. What about after ketones? Ooh, a couple people said the amide. Okay, so why do you guys think the amide is more reactive than the carboxylic acid or the ester? Someone said less sterics than oxygen, that's fair. And someone said less electrons donating. But let's think about that a little bit more, right? So remember what we talked about when we were talking about... Um, acidity and basicity and how since oxygen is more electronegative it's going to hog all those electrons to itself right and it's going to be less likely to give them up well in this case uh that is still true right it we already have a bond but that is still true oxygen wants to hog all of its electrons so this bond right here between the carbon and the oxygen is going to be a lot weaker than this bond between the carbon and the nitrogen. And the reason for that is because nitrogen gives up more of its electrons, it's more likely to give up electrons. So this will be a stronger bond. And since it is donating more electron density, even though it is electronegative and it's a big bulky group, um, it is actually going to donate more density, taking this delta plus away a little bit. So it's going to be less delta plus than the carboxylic acid or the ester. Does that sort of kind of make sense what I'm saying so far? Yes, no, maybe so. I can also repeat it if you guys want. But so with that logic in place, then we can actually say that the amide is going to be the least reactive of these options because it has a stronger bond and it donates more electron density. So I'm going to put amide at the end because it's the least reactive. And then someone already said this uh, in the chat. So the carboxylic acid and the ester are pretty much the same. Um, the carboxylic acid is just going to be a little bit less react or a little bit more reactive, excuse me. So it'll be C and then E and then A. But again, C and E are pretty much equal. Um, I believe there's just a tiny difference. So let me zoom out. Any questions on the order that I put these in? Anything at all? Okay, so I know it's 152. That took a little bit longer than expected, but I just want to review these names super quick, as I promised. So we don't know all of these names yet, so we're not going to do them all. But we do know what this is called, so please remind me what is this called. Starts with an H. Hydrazine, yes, because it's what's going into the reaction. Awesome, okay, and the one right next to it is going to be called what? Hydrazone, awesome. Perfect, perfect, perfect. And so right next to it, what is that going to be called? Exactly, phenylhydrazine. Actually, we don't have that thing. Phenylhydrazine. 
Alrighty, what is this lovely thing? Be as specific as possible, pretty please. Awesome, yes, it is a primary amine. Perfect. Alrighty. What is this thing called? An enamine. Perfect. Awesome. We finished the first row, so let's move on to the second one. We haven't done this yet, so we're going to skip it. We haven't done this yet, we're going to skip it. What is this? Phenyl hydrazone. Awesome. Perfect. The next one, what are we going to call this? What do we think? The imine, exactly. Um, some people also call this the imine. So if you hear Dr. West call it an imine, same thing. What is this guy? The gem dial. Awesome. So the last row. What do we call this guy right here? He's the half crab. Yes, so the hemiacetal. Sweet. What about the one right next door? The acetal, perfect. Perfect. How about this guy? It's very similar to the hemiacetal, but now it has two R's here. Yes, the hemiketal. Sweet. And last but not least, what do we have here? The ketal. Awesome. So let me zoom out so you guys can see this whole page. Ta-da! I know we went a couple minutes over, but I really wanted you guys to get this practice in uh, for the naming. So I put all of the starting materials or reagents in pink and all the final products in blue. Just so you guys could kind of see that contrast a little bit. So yay, we covered so much today. I'm so proud of you guys. Um, it's a lot to take in and two hours is a long time to do chemistry. So I'm so proud of you. You did so much today. I hope you guys feel accomplished. Happy Friday. Even if you don't totally 100% understand these things, um, I think you guys know so much. You guys participated so much. I'm so proud, I'm so happy. You guys are doing so great. Rosemary, I have a quick question. Yes, what's up? For, for this stuff on the test, um, should we know it so good to where we just know the starting product and the ending product? Like, will it always be the same? Like, do we even really know the mechanism? Not really. So my thing is, just know the mechanism enough to understand why things happen but you shouldn't have to draw the mechanism every time for the exam. So on the exam, you should be able to just see the starting material and know the final product. Okay, thank you. You're very welcome. And then someone said, what was the purple one? So this one is pink and it's just the starting material and these are blue and that's the final product. It might look purplish zoomed out, um, but on my screen, it looks super pink. You're welcome. Okay, guys, have a great weekend. I will upload all this stuff and send them to you. Um, and someone said, are the hemi the intermediates? So if you have an acid catalyst, they will be the intermediate. 
if you have a base catalyst, it will be the final product. So it just depends on whether you have acid or base. You're very welcome. Have a great weekend. Bye-bye.